Hello, it's my fans. Welcome to the commentary desk here live from Atlanta, Georgia. My name is Bart, and this is Hindu Man, and we are on our way into day number three. No, day number four now, because we're broadcast on Thursdays. Four. My God, that's a lot of smite. Let's take a look at the schedule today, as it is the final day of week number five. Halfway through the season, we'll start seeing the rematches coming back around after this one. Well, after this one, yeah, and the big key here is Titan versus Epsilon is the game we're going to be starting off with today. The best thing about this is that there's a chance for Epsilon to go undefeated first half of the split if they can 2-0 against Titan here. And then you have London Conspiracy Dignitas coming up right after that out of Europe, followed by AFK Denial. And then Eager Enemy, which is another big game out of North America. Yeah, those, uh, those last two games should be real bloodbaths in NA. Honestly. Yeah, it's a, really and, and a statement game here for Eager versus Enemy. If they can find the win, Enemy had a very, very good first half of the split so far. Yep. Uh, Overperforming, I think uh, you would say, and, and Eager will be a good test. Eager looked pretty good last week. Well, on top of that as well, we take into account now that we're going to be expanding the land to six teams. Yes. Seeding's going to be very important for a lot of these teams. So super those mid tables, definitely interested. And here's the settings for EU. Epsilon still at the top, 12-0, undefeated. Fnatic, with the 2-0 yesterday, moves into a tie with second as Paradigm, and they are at 9-5. Titan, they need the wins here today to move up into that potential 9-5 spot. A 1-1 split for Zepsilon wouldn't be so bad, and would tie them for second. Yeah, but if they can take two ahead, they'll go back into the second seed that they Indeed. were before that game yesterday, which is very important for them, too. Very tight at the top. Down at the bottom, though, we will have some contestation between, you know, Myrmidons, tight Dignitas, and Justice. Well, Dignitas today versus LC. A couple wins puts them in a tie for that sixth place spot to Definitely. move to land. Really, really big games for them. But for the sign-off one, Epsilon versus Titan. Let's have a look at Titan, first of all. This is the roster they'll be playing with today. All being well. And as usual, the faces we've seen time and time again. There they are. Ataraxia, Repi, Prime, Kanye Life, and Confrey. They will be the boys on the field today. And, well, out of Titan recently, we've seen a lot of drops, drop games. Yeah, drop games last, and shenanigans. The last three times they've played, they've played LC, Paradigm, and Justice, and split with all three. So they're not picking up two wins at all for the time. They're Paradigm, the only team with a winning record out of that bunch. Yeah, and the others, you know, negative win ratios. But they're still splitting games against Titan. And now they're against Epsilon. Going to be a bigger ask. All right, we'll see. And take a look at Epsilon now as we talk about them. And, uh, well, it's adapting right there in the second position. That's definitely the player to watch on this squad. Dimi, Yemen, Raffer, and Emilito. Well, week not two, slouches either. Week 2 MVP adapting. Week 3 MVP adapting. Week 4 MVP, Yamin on the mid lane. So over four weeks so far. A Giannis three to be feared as Epsilon. Yeah, he's, out of the Yamin. They've been very, very effective. And with this meta change too, and we've seen Titan play around with some crazy stuff like yes. Guan Yu, Warrior, Guan Yu, Sun Wukong. <laughs> I expect we could see the same thing come out Well, you know that Epsilon... Has, has had an opportunity to see it now, both in North America and Europe. Yep. And we'll see if they try to uh, knock Guan Yu out of the draft here, or if it will be the normal bands, the Aphrodites, and the Hells, the oh. Kepharis being removed from the pool. Take into account, Emilito has played solo lane when he was on Cloud9 for a while. Mm -hmm. He's also played mid lane a little bit and when he was switching around with Yamin about who was going to be the Hunter for Epsilon. Now he's in the Hunter role, so he is very adept at pulling out crazy picks himself, potentially in the Hunter role. Sarkat locked in on the side of Epsilon, back over to Titan with the second two bands. First one pending here. Will it be, it'll probably be the Kepri they'll take out of the pool right away. And uh, Kepri, then Summer Kong is going to be up there too, once again, to be potentially. But I think let the Hell and the Aphrodite and the Healers through. Well, Giannis is contentious as well between these two teams. Yeah. They've both been picking up a lot of Giannis this season. Yeah, first pick Giannis wouldn't be out of the question here from Epsilon even. Wouldn't be a bad call at all. Um, a lot of Frey coming out though as well from. Um, Emilito on Epsilon. He's started playing a lot more Frey, a little bit less of the Neath, but he has wanted that to go to for the tried and true and tested. And the funny thing is about Titan is they banned away the Neef when they tried to run that double warrior lane because mm. it's very safe and effective against them. Well, there's the Aphrodite removed. Now Titan with the final ban here. What will they keep away from Epsilon? Will it be the Hell? That's been the standard ban in Europe. Uh, but do you think Epsilon first picks Hell if it's on the board? I don't know. I mean, if they do, they can still put it solo with Dimmy or they can put it in mid with Yamin. It doesn't have to be. Giannis is going to be the okay. focus here. Now the funny thing is if Epsilon don't first pick this, I think Titan will take it. Yeah, I, I expect so. And they'll probably duo lane it, Sun Wukong Hell. I mean, they, they should do, because <laughs> there's awful. so many bands towards Hell that it should show that it should be picked, right? Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, yeah with the, um, the ban rate on the god so far this split, it would uh, definitely speak volumes if it's not first picked. Yeah, Epsilon going to take Sun Wukong, so. Yeah, it was left on the table. It has to be picked up. He's one of the go-tos for the time being. It also detracts from Kanye life, you know, to get that one and do what he was doing in the last two games up against London Conspiracy um, and Paradigm, where he's had that in his bag and he's worked very well for him. Big question is, will Titan take Guan Yu here in this first picking phase? I mean, Guan Yu Hell picks? isn't a bad start in 
situation. No, but it, it does lock you into two core healers. Which and then you could have an Odin in response. Right, yeah, you'll see the Odin come out from Epsilon in that case. So they'll want to space out those picks a bit, but they'll take the Sylvanas for Raffer, which has been his go-to. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, away from Raffer, which yeah. has been his go-to. And, of course, undefeated on the gun. Well, to be fair, with Epsilon as well. Well, they're all undefeated on that. Yeah. They've played yeah. so far this season. But with Rafa, what he really does, he's, he's got a Geb, he's got a Sylvanas, and then he's got Warriors and Assassins. He's not really transitioned into the full Guardian role where he's comfortable on all the supports. His Athena's been me mediocre, so is his Ymir so far. So take away Sylvanas isn't a bad shot, but it does have the potential of the Odin, which I've seen him play against a Sylvanas before and look to pick them off. Well, they're taking the Thor here as well, still leaving open the Guan Yu pick for that duel. And we saw them run it with Thor. Sun Wukong certainly the, the preferred we, pick. We could potentially see Ataraxia take that Sylvanas again to the solo lane, like last time, you know, and for support. <laughs> I certainly hope not. <laughs> Epsilon, they'll take the Neath as well. Um, so, yeah, they're prepared to shut down this aggro duo out of Titan here. They've selected not only the best counter pick probably to it in the Neath, uh, also removing the Sun Wukong, which is certainly the best option to pair with the Guan Yu. And someone come with the flex option as well. Support could be run. We've seen it on Trick Tank and others as well. All the solo lane. Dimmy could be taking that one there. Potentially even jungle, although we don't no. see it too much. It's not a thing. Potential. He's got potential. Isis for the mid lane for Yamin. It yeah. is a thing. It is it's a, not thing. a thing. Wolfie made it happen. <laughs> Two years ago. Poorly. He still made it happen. <laughs> uh, yeah, Isis locked in here on the side of Esalon. Titan. Their final pick pending. Guan Yu should be picked in this position, I would say. Or the hell. It's no big question mark about that hell. I mean, if they won the Guan Yu here, that's going to pigeonhole them into running that duo lane. Yeah. Double war. Well, it could well, be solo Guan Yu. I mean, Guan Yu Sylvanas together does sound quite disgusting, actually. <laughs> as, as the duo. As the duo. Because yeah. you, you get the root on, say, for example, the Sun Wukong support. You root him, and <gasps> then you beat him down with Tello Assault. Is it him? Pretty Prime's Vulcan. He's Vulcan. Back. Okay, great. A Wheelish now uh, in effect as well as a, as a potential pick and potentially going to be banned out by Epsilon as well. Titan, we'll see. If they if they remove something that has control, like if they ban a Mirror here, I would say that it's very, very likely to be the A Wheelish pick. That, that was one of the first things I thought of when A Wheelish came out was the combo with Vulcan's meatballs and being mm -hmm. able to pull him straight in from the mid lane. is because the range projectile of a knockup is so effective to be able to hit. And it's such a good traveling speed that it's not easy to dodge. Oh, the band, the Odin here on the side of Titan. That makes um, sense. Also makes sense. I mean, well, the, the core healing in Sylvanas, obviously, but but uh, Wheelish, you know, she has trouble getting around the fight. She's not very mobile, so things oh, like also, Amir. Vulcan Odin. gets stuck inside the ring, too. That yeah, be, Vulcan doesn't have a very good uh, a real big time in the ring either, does he? And then Freya's going to be banned out as well. Not a surprise there. We've seen a little bit of Freya coming out from both sides, honestly. We've seen uh, Comfrey pick it up once or twice, as well as Emelito just lately. And with that Neath being locked in, that's probably going to go to Emelito. But if they take the Wheelix, that puts Thor into the solo lane. We saw Cyclone spin run it. And we've heard I could put Sylvanas in the solo. <laughs> I mean, They've done it before. It. He's done it before. It worked. And it was awful. It worked really well. <laughs> if you're trying to farm L's, that's a very, very good position to put Sylvanas. And her is, well, to be fair, they have been splitting a lot lately. Eh? Yeah, maybe, maybe that's the, the game plan. Let's I get can't a split. believe they gave that game away with Sylvanas. Uh, don't, don't. Don't. Back to Epsilon, though. Final two picks coming. Their jungle still pending. As is likely to be their mid laner or solo laner out of the Nuwa here. So it'll be the, the two kind of super powerful female mages for the mid lane here. The very, very popular, the two of them. I mean, that Dimmy will be playing that in the solo more than likely. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's yeah. played it a couple of times. We've seen some Isis come out in the solo lane for Azalea, but nobody else has really... I like Nuwa so much better. Than, like, when you pick both of them, we've seen both of these characters drafted before, and it's very strange to not see Nuwa in the solo Thanatos. lane with her global presence. And Thanatos will be the jungler for Epsilon. Okay, so, uh, you know, great against Thor, basically, is the idea here. Great counter-initiator. Good against Thor. If he can find the Scythes onto Vulcan, Vulcan can have a few issues there as well. And then finally, it's going to be Ymir looking. That could be Sylvana solo. No, it's a mere jungle. Thor solo. Hey. Sylvana's on her Vulcan mid. Thor solo? Yeah. Thor against Nuwa solo? Yeah. I think it'd be Sylvana solo. I think it's going to be Sylvana solo, too. and, and I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little amazed that they're going to go back to it. I don't know what the strength they think it is. It was too. not very good the first time around. Now, it was also into a mage, I want to say. Okay. Um, I mean, so his, his wave clay should be pretty good. Pretty should. decent for the well, most part. Yeah, he, I guess. He can build so he, Oh, Adder actually is playing Sylvanas, so he wants it to be a thing so bad you can just see it. Well, I guess he's just trying to prove that it works, and what better way to prove it than to try and do you know, Epsilon with and, it. And this could be one of those you know, broadcasts where I hear it in a year, and I'm like, man, I can't believe I was doubting the Sylvanas <laughs> solo. It's so dominant. It won worlds, yeah. but... It we'll see, world. we'll see. It won worlds. Well, coming into this, Titan R8 and 4, Epsilon at 12 and 0 right now. If Epsilon can win this 2-0, they will go undefeated for the first half of the split. 
between these two teams, though, funny thing about Titan, uh, sorry, about Epsilon, the average game time is 29 minutes. So they're winning fast. So if you want to put your dinner on, it takes 30 minutes. To cook. <laughs> yeah, 30 minutes it from now, be good. 30 minutes from now, you'll uh, you would see an, an Epsilon victory if all went according to plan. And well, the Thanatos plays right into that early victory. Well, here's the best thing as well: is that Titan's average loss time is exactly the same time as Epsilon's average win time. <laughs> Well, the, the, the scales wouldn't shift too much if it goes as planned here for Epsilon. Let's go ahead and introduce the squads, guys. The blue team, they're the bottom side of the mini-map and the left side of your spectator UI. They'll be known for this contest as Epsilon. And it'll be Dimmy as the new on the soul lane, adapting in the jungle as Thanatos Yaman. Will be your mid lane, Isis, and that leaves Raffer and Emilitu as the duo lane. Sun Wukong and Neath. Their opponents today are Titan, second place team from Worlds. Ataraxia will be once again trying his hand at the soul lane, Sylvanas. Rappy in the jungle is Thor, pretty prime and mid laning Vulcan. Kanye Life bringing some extra control and support out of that Amir. And Confrey will be your dual lane hunter in on her. And away we go. Now the big thing is, Azo actually did go for the demonic grip rush here in lane again. He's going to be able to allow him to clear the wave a little bit more effectively. Uh, one bad thing about Sylvanas in the solo lane, though, he doesn't have pushback on the minions. There's a lot more than one bad thing okay, about Sylvanas okay, okay, okay. in the solo lane. Well, for push power, for example, he can't push the minions back, so they'll still continue to attack, even if he's auto attacking them. They don't get the knockback effect on that. They took that away from him. Just be to help him in the duo lane more than anything else. So one thing we haven't really brought up so far yet is that these two teams are scrim partners. They are indeed. So, uh, uh, yeah, you would suspect that Ataraxia has beaten Dimmy in the solo lane as Nua before to take this pick. Potentially, or it's something they practice against. But, I mean, they'll have a, a, official scrim partners, but then they'll, they will have scrim other teams as well. Sure. Just because they don't want to give everything away to one team and be, you know, dominated against I would them. guess that the pick here that's a little out of sorts is that Thanatos on adapting, and that is uh, very much, I would suppose, Epsilon's pocket strat against the Sylvanas solo lane. Yeah. Well, last time these two faced off as well, Rafa wasn't on the team officially, and so he was banned away in the summer split, mm. so he wasn't available. For this, so the full squad have never faced a competitive play. They did face in the Hitbox Invitational, though, where it did split out, I believe, in the end between the two teams. Or maybe it was 2-1 to Epsilon is what I want to say there. So it's very close between them. And I guess that's one of the reasons why they're scrim partners, because they can both take games off each other regularly. Yeah, and uh, getting that level 2 ultimate up on Thanatos nice and fast will be an important part of shutting down this solo lane. But you can see Ataraxia already going to be sitting around, you know, 3 quarters HP, 50% HP probably for most of this lane. And that makes these Thanatos ganks very, very dangerous with this percentage-based execute and the high HP pool of the Sylvanas. We could potentially see a Salvation coming out from somebody on the squad as well, just to avoid that Ooh. execution from the Thanatos. Big aggression coming out there, but a lot of poke damage hit onto Rafa there. Luckily, though, the minions will fall down to the wayside. And Kanye Life's Ymir. Now, Ymir this season has not had a good split whatsoever. He's got a very low, I think it's like 28% win ratio right now. However, it is Kanye Life, and he did get it banned at Worlds. Maybe he can make it work. Looking for the play on a Repi here is Epsilon. They'll find the silence. No, just a little bit too late. Adapting Alexa, to go for the scent of death before trying for the silence. It'll be just off the mark with that bonus harass out of Yaman's spirit ball. Away goes the Thor, and back to the wave clear goes Epsilon. Really unfortunately, if they would have found that silence there, that he wouldn't be able to jump to his hammer. They would have potentially found a kill quite easily off at least forced Repi back to base. Yeah, they're going to definitely push him back to base. But that being said, you know, all the camps have been taken on their side. So it wouldn't have been too bad. Falling back as Epsilon to pick up their back camps as well. And looking at the gold, it looks like they stole away a back camp from Titan as they are going to be up just a bit here. Ataraxia actually did just return to base and picked up Demonic Grip and Teleport already. So he's already looking for fast rotations around the map, potentially. He's going to deal with Nuwa, who's going to split push for days, is the, the, the actual big statement of that. It's Telkines. Oh, it's Telkines, actually, my bad. Yeah, yeah, the, the start to this build, uh, he went this last time as well, as the Telkines. This is what gives you the wave clear. Um, quickly, the, the school lesson on Telkines ring is that uh, it gives you 40 bonus damage per hit. Mages in hand scale at about 35%, so this is worth a little over 100 power if you're in handing. Um, quite a bit. And of course, it also brings a 45 power, so the equivalent of about 150 power uh, for heavily based in handing mages. And obviously, Sylvanas with the spread damage as well. This spikes his DPS a whole heck of a lot. A big rotation, four members of Epsilon on the left side here That's in nice the Titan Raffer. jungle. Raffer will zone out the rest of the team by himself, and they will go ahead and steal away this purple buff. And that this was just is how really the best teams in the world get ahead little by little. Exactly, really well executed. What you saw is Isis pushing mid lane first of all, be able to rotate. But Here look at go. this already. Adapting good at dunking mid lane straight away. Do they know this? They will now. Oh, <gasps> misses the dunk. Backfire. The backfire was just in time. Adapting takes a little bit of poking response, but it'll be fine. Those two ultimates used there on the side of Epsilon. Two of their uh, most effective gank based ultimates. And they will not successfully find the kill in the mid lane Titan. They, uh, they they hold through the first big aggression of Epsilon. That's a bit key here. Epsilon's the aggressor so far. We've not seen anything out of Titan in the aggressive sense. Oh, look at their lineup. I mean, 
Thor, sure, but he's had, he has to camp the middle lane to keep Vulcan safe from the Thanatos Isis with well, the superior push. Look at what was used on as well. We saw three almost out of Epsilon, so yeah. they, they're the ones... They'll be aggressive early, like you said, because they're wanting to get Thanatos online. Well, and Titan, Titan doesn't want to fight until Sylvanas has four items. Minimum. Maybe until, probably five. Until Sylvanas gets out late. I mean, Sylvanas happen. needs... Sylvanas is not a threat, really, to anybody until he's six-slotted. Yeah. And one of those items basically has to be a Fatalis. If he's going to, like, run you down and solo kill you. Is that, is, is that the plan to make him go full in-hand auto attacks as the game plan? Well, I think that... I think there's two options, two big options here. As uh, Raptor's going to take a good bit of poke here. He gets actually chain CC'd and knocked up awesome. in that Amir ultimate. Beautiful execution from Titan there to keep him CC. That's a tricky target to keep down. The knockup was the key there from yeah, The meatball just after the CC ended from the stuns was key because otherwise he could have popped the clone. No diminishing returns away. on knockups, and you can't feed in knockups either to get away. There so. was no chance he could get away from that really good execution. The value of the Vulcan. Value yeah. Vulcan. And we were just saying a second ago like, how it was like Epsilon with the aggressors well, and Titan that just returned the favor and actually found the first blood. That is first blood, you're right. So the extra bounty going their way. And and yeah, so I don't know. I would say Sylvanas, when we saw him build it last time, it was like a couple of in-handing items, a little bit of damage, okay. just so the whiffs like really suck a little bit, and then a lot of tank items, right? Like I basically think, become a frontliner. I mean, the, the whole idea behind him is probably be very, very tanky, but at the same time, his healing from the wisp should be the big thing. The issue, this though, is still like... Solo laners are really important, generally speaking, in the meta for zoning out the enemy team when you're trying to take objectives or rushing down the enemy backline. And Sylvanas can zone out very, very well. Can he? Well, can he, right? I mean, like, what kind of damage is he really going to be able to put out? Got, no, he's got an AoE route. He doesn't have to power damage. He's got to keep him CC'd up. That's right. He, he can get control to fairly well. So it's, it's a good control gun. So he's got the but CC route. He's he can't got... rush down Emilito on the backside. And that, no. that's the big thing you're missing on this team. Potentially, though, goes he back can there. pull them in. He can pull Emilito sure. in. But there's a lot of pressure on Kanye life to actually control the enemy hunter here That's true. as they're not going to get any out of their solo laner right where you would see an Osiris or a Bolona or a Sun Wukong or any of the warriors and Odins even they just go they leap to the back line they get in the hunter's exactly. face and they prevent them from putting out the damage that's where Sylvanas is mostly deficient, and he's kind of forced into a blink here, but he's taking his teleport, which seems compulsory in this build to be honest with you because like you get the telecons ring you port back right away you basically have to and that's what Ataraxia has come down to now which is dumping his kit to chip away a dim dimmy slowly but mm -hmm. surely to get some lane control and just farm, 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 farm. Pretty much the whole game plan. I love what Emilito did there, by the way. He pushed up the duo lane, then rotated around for the red buff, tried to pick it up. There was a ward there. They may be able to pick Rafa here, though, who's very deep into the gank was here already. Ah, sun Wukong. The clone comes out. He's wise to use the clone straight away because a lot of people might have tried to hold it a little bit longer or use transformations to get away, but realizing he was in danger, he used the clone. They might even go aggressive onto the purple buff now, knowing Vulcan all is down. Yeah, it gets a Thor Sun and a Blink Amir. Uh, it's, it's pretty tough to get those. Those animals to cut out safely. Bird form is not that fast. So let's check it in with the graphs again because I want to see how the first blood versus the experience is different in here because Epsilon invaded twice. They picked up two buffs in the jungle and it's worked out to pretty much keep this even. Yeah, it's a 300 gold on the side of Titan and 400 experience on the side of Epsilon. So, so still anyone's game of seven is in. And this is what we kind of expect from this game is it'll probably be a farm fest for the first 15 minutes going backwards and forwards and then we'll see a big team fight that'll probably go one way or the other. Oh, Confrey wants to fight. He's baiting them in for the Thor ultimate. Raffer in a lot of trouble here. He's getting quite low. They know the ultimate's down. And yeah, that's a confirmed kill. Might die though. On her, he wants to jump away from adapting Thanatos. Now Thanatos finds himself in an awkward situation but the rest of the team is here trying to rally back to the squad. Ice's ultimate heals them up a bit. Shoot, he does Kanye. avoid the Vulcan knockup, but that means they can't confirm the kill on the Kanye life. Emilito quite low as well here, but he will make it back safely. No more initiation coming up. A Titan getting the better of that exchange. The Jukes by Kanye life was so good then as well. Just to be able to avoid the last little hit from Adapting would have healed him up as well, potentially. Good turnaround for Titan. Again, they baited that fight. Left hand side, so right hand side, we can see Dimmy trade off once again with Ataraxia. The pull does not connect though. Did he, did he lose his cooldown there? I think if he hit the pull, he would have died. He would have died. Yeah, he lost. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, he lost the cooldown. He, he got stunned out while it was in the air. So but if, he, if he would have landed that pull, that was a definitely death onto Nuwa. You think? Yeah, for sure. The root and a few more in hands. The pull back in just in hands would have been enough to bring him down because he had to run all the way back again. Ataraxia showing off that Sylvanas going a little bit better this time around. Well, he's being more aggressive with it. I think is the difference here. He's using his ultimate ahead of time just to apply damage because he can half health. Dimmy just with the ultimate pretty much and wisps straight afterwards because he can confirm the wisps. Looks time. like Dimmy's going to be rushing into the Divine Ruin here. Shut down some of the healing on the Sylvanas and globally apply that healing debuff when she does elect to use the fire shards. And it's effective in lane and it's effective the whole game through as well. So not, not a bad decision whatsoever to pick that one up. Oof. Those Vulcan turrets. Sometimes you turn a corner and you just 
Take half your HP. Can we just check in with Prime for a second? I want to see what he's maxing at the moment because it always differentiates depending on the situation. Backfire, Backfire max. this time, then straight into turret. Sometimes we can see turret being maxed first for lane control dominance if required. But this time, definitely going to go for the backfire damage. And to be fair, one of the artists with Vulcan and most well-known. I mean, AFK even said they banned Pretty Prime's Vulcan because they didn't want to have to deal with it because he's a god with that. Yeah, and you know, you'd, you'd see probably every pub Vulcan ever in the history of the world maxes out Meatball. Randomly, just, yeah. Just because of the poke oh, is just so play. good. But yeah, this is a big great opportunity play. here. The Emma Little backflip is going to avoid some of that Desert Fury damage. Kanye life. Kanye life. Titan is going off right now. This is really good. Oh, Meatball. That's a kill, but oh, he's going to pay for it. So good. The Meatball actually uh, knocks the Thor Sun off, but Reppy does get the double tap on the backside. Thanatos can't cover the distance to get to the on her. They'll change and try to take Reppy, but they take a lot of damage from the turret here. The wall. Just a little bit late. The cooldown, just about a second too late. Yeah, I mean, had be able to, to use circle of protection there, but that was all Titan for me. Kanye just swings around the back, gets a double freeze off. It's straight into our impale into the pillow, which was huge from um, the boy Comfrey. And then straight after that, clean up crew. Yep, adapting. He tries to counter initiate there. Doesn't find what they're looking for. They do get the return kill, but it's uh, it's on to the enemy jungler, and he's had a fine time. Repicast, he's, he's off to the good start. Thor, you just need to get those early levels up to about level 10. Maybe level nine, and then and then you're pretty safe to just go ahead build into your Jotun's wrath, and uh, yeah, we'll just not talk about that. Uh, yeah, back to the middle lane. He, wa he waved. He waved. He waved. The <laughs> he knew what was wrong. He was like, "That was for you, but after all your shots at me, yes, <laughs> Thanks, I missed that as well." Thanks, Nate. I appreciate that. But five to two with Titan right now. And to be fair, what's happened in this game for Repicast, which is really good, is that his duo lane has been the aggressors, mm -hmm. and because they've been aggressive, they forced the issue for Epsilon to show their hand to an extent, and then he's been able to come in a little bit later, more often than not, and actually find the pickups. Been very lucky to escape adapting on that last gank, uh, but Yamin did pick up the kill, which was very, very good from Yamin's rotation. Well, you see Epsilon. I mean, they're willing. They're definitely willing to fight. And I think Titan's sure. uh, baiting him a little bit. I mean, I think that's the key here is that they're trying to play Epsilon's game strategy of fight. And Titan's very good at team fighting. That's the one strength Titan has. Their laning phase can be a little bit weaker sometimes. They will fall behind in gold against some of the teams that are predominantly farmers in lane. Um, the likes of Paradigm is a prime example of that one. Or even Fnatic, they can struggle against those in terms of farm early game. But their team fight is where they're strongest. And that's for me, that's where Epsilon is too for the most part. Con free. Oh, oh great. Oh, hella. my. Access denied. I wish I was that good at this game. Well, this is this is one of those comps similar to what we saw at a Titan last split. I'm sorry, last season mm. was the triple wall combos. We've got Ymir, we've got Thor, and we've got Anher. They ran this once or twice before and just combined those walls so well to just change the style of the map completely where there was a lot of places you couldn't get access to for a long period of the game. It's bad news for Epsilon. The Titans winning this early game here. I mean, they have the, the very, very heavily focused early game composition. Nuwa, Isis, Thanatos, Sun Wukong, and Neath. Is Across the board, very early game focus. Nuwa, probably the deepest reaching god on the squad. I feel this is our first Thanatos this split as well. Did we see one in NA? I'm trying Maybe to recall. I think we may have seen one very early on. Um, but but the point here being that Titan just picked a ton of CC. Amir, Amir very early game god. We saw Cyclone Spin run him in the solo lane on the side of... AFK in North America. Yeah, in solo and then went. He got that. That's the highest point in Alpha draft as well. Basically. Yeah, that was a crazy snowball game. It was. How could we forget? Um, so Titan, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a lot of control. Ataraxis knockoff, obviously, but it's a lot of guaranteed control. The big circle from Sylvanas, the cone from Amir, uh, versus what is all basically skill shot oriented on the side of Epsilon. It's easier to confirm these kills for Titan. I mean, they've got a lot of control as well, Epsilon, but it's a little bit more difficult. Like you said, more, more harder to land abilities. Well, I think Epsilon that. just... I think maybe they baited themselves in this draft a little bit. They lost sight of the fact that this squad has very, very low CC um, versus the Amir. I think the Amir final pick here is really what's making the difference for Titan. I think it's also the fact Titan's backline, which is the Anher and the Vulcan, very, very efficient at escaping bad situations. Vulcan a lot of self heal. Backfire. Yeah, Vulcan backfire, Meatball will buy him a little bit of time, and Anher as well. You just saw what he could do there after having to use the beads against the World Weaver. Um, still managing to get away from Rafa trying to continue the aggression. Well, the Sylvanas. Starting to come online here a bit. The Spear of the Mad just really gives him uh, all of his potential. 30 minutes in and we've not seen Titan try and push down mid lane. I'm quite surprised by that because this is the sort of time of the game where they will start grouping as a four man and trying to force an issue somewhere in the map. But I guess with it being, with it being like a lead for them this time around, they've not had to do that just yet. I think, yeah, I think it's just the, the scrim partner. They're so familiar with each other's game. They try and switch it up a little They bit. have to switch it up a bit, yeah. More often than not. You can see golf here control very important for both these two teams. Starting to get a little bit more valuable as time goes on. And you can see Ward's placed at the moment. Nine for Rafa. And it's actually the side of Epsilon that are up on Ward's. 
Yeah, I mean, they have to deal with a Thor. Thor with a little bit further initiation range of the Thantos. Thantos is a bit easier to spot as well coming in. That they do need that ward cover. Though. Nine, Sorry? Wa nine wards at 14 minutes, that's quite a few. Oh, they've been losing the dual lane. Big gank in the mid lane though, and we will see a casualty go down to pretty prime. Good will with your combination. Adapting in the air, will he look for Thor is the question, or will it be Ymir in the jungle? In Ooh. the end, they look it for was Godfrey. Godfrey. <laughs> Does he have the silence? No. Neath, one more shot to do it. Doesn't have the ultimate available. Thor's gonna come in and try to support as well. That but it's a full on retreat from Epsilon. Sylvanas Maybe looking at the gold fear here as well. If they pulled Sylvanas over, Nuwa indicating that her fire shards were instrumental in getting that last yeah. kill as well onto Pretty Prime. And Vulcan does represent a lot of area damage and a lot of control on this squad. That knockup is huge really there. Frostbreath still going to hit on Raffer. Raffer likely to lose he his really life. Dies, yeah, can't get up fine. on the Somersault Cloud. Great, great trade for the gold fury there. Titan gets another kill. Epsilon gets a gold fury. And this game is now in their favor on the gold charts. Experience a bit as well. But uh, they've, they've, it's been a pretty nice swing here. About 1,800 gold yeah. going back their way. Big backwards and forwards. And this is what you expect out the top two teams out of EU. Or the suspected top two after Tyon. You know, they've had this game in hand to be able to be played today against Epsilon. Epsilon, number one seeded for a reason right now. You can see they were behind ever so slightly and brought it back already. But that fight for me, for, from Rafa's point of view, he zoned out three people, kept them busy. Even if he lost his life, it's completely worthwhile. And he still had the potential of escape if, if Titan didn't play it perfectly either. Yeah, I'm mean, going to show off a little bit of the wave clear here of Isis. What makes her such a powerful mid, her ability to just take these waves out so very, very quickly. And uh, she can she can out-rotate you pretty fast as well with the wing gusts, as it does grant that bonus MS. Especially early on. I mean, Prime, once Prime gets going, though, he can just drop a turret and leave the lane, and he should be fine. One backfire will clear the wave as well, if required. As we see in the jungle, Kanye helping out with a speed buff right now. Titan, though, have just passed, well, it's 16 minutes in. We've got a minute past their fastest game win this split. They beat Paradigm. <laughs> oh, Thor's going up here. Nuwa's going to be the target. Dimmy, it's going to be tough to lock down here. We'll see if he goes right in the middle of the cloud. He'll miss. Find it. He'll spin to win as well. Neath ultimate use, and Dimmy will escape a three-man gank over on the right side. I like what Emilito did there. He, he knew the gank was coming onto Dimmy, so he supported just in case they did find the dunk on it. He immediately fired it for safety, so they couldn't continue the aggression. Good call from Emilito in the solo, in the duo. They're not going to find it there. And now Repi, he kind of wants to make something out of nothing. Look at the double tap on adapting. They'll find the freeze as well. Can they stand. get the damage in time? The Amir ultimate not going to be there. Adapting wants to counter engage. He can get an easy kill into Kanye life, but it's not going to get juked nearly there. Adapting just a little bit too confident there. A little nice too good. Really nice work from Rafa zoning them out and now going to pressure with the clone as well. It's tanking the tower. Keep pushing this on a little bit more. They will get the tower as well based off that. And the boys of Titan have to retreat. Meanwhile, man, man fight. Confrey. Desert Fury doesn't do enough here. Emilito, four seconds away from his next spirit arrow. And yeah, I don't think he can root here. I, th I don't think he wins this fight. I don't think he's going to find this kill on the Confrey, but he will get himself he a lot of room to farm. Potentially get the tower or free here, back though. if he wants. I mean, he could potentially get the tower off that. No, you can see Confrey wants to stay for this wave because he doesn't want to lose tower pressure here. But he's got to be careful because if once that unravel hits, lifesteal, he's take a few shots at Emilito there. He's fine. He's just going to tank it up. You should be able to get the tower. Yep, it will fall down. Comfrey, either way, Comfrey lost. Like he, he was like, I'm going to lose the tower. I need to stay for the wave, or I'm going to lose the tower anyway. Yeah, so he'll take the extra gold. He'll also secure his purple buff now for sticking around, which ultimately is the right decision, I think, for Comfrey to have made there. Um, he'll get quite a bit out of it. And the mail of renewals are out for our supports. This item continues to trend up as the delicious flavor of the month. Solanes have done a good job so far of making sure they stay even paced. Level 17 for both of them so far. Um, one rotation to the Gold Fury from both, but generally you're looking to get those solar lanes as big as uh, level 20 as quick as possible. And that's one of the things, maybe Sylvanas has a small reason to be there. With the extra levels, he's going to have the extra abilities, I guess. A little bit extra I damage. Mean, but, but at this point, like all he's getting is cooldown reduction on his pull. Okay, but then his ultimate will also do a little bit more damage at being ranked. Maybe. I guess. We hope. Sure. I mean, it'll do more damage. Hopefully, they'll come and explain. But you're not. You're not wanting that extra hundred damage out of Wrath of Terra. We, we should bring up this Sylvanas next time we speak to Nate online when he when he comes in for an interview. Ask him exactly what it's. Yeah, I know. I was gonna say I'm I'm rooting for Titan to win this one. So just so I can ask them, what's up with the Sylvanas and why? Well, I guess we could ask Epsilon too. I mean, Epsilon will probably be like, well, let's beat us in scrims a couple no, times. No, no, because Rafa will just say, tune into my stream if you want to find out. Because we asked him about his Soulstone start on Sylvanas. <laughs> that what he, he said. Like, yeah, he said, tune into my stream if you want to find out. I was like, oh wow. Well, yeah, but he's getting too good at self-promotion here. Here comes Ataraxia. They go through the initiation, but it's a squishy Sylvanas here. Not enough damage to burst him down just yet. Adapting does get the execute. Now they'll turn their attention to Kanye life. He'll put out quite a bit on That's to the Epsilon line, jungler, but adapting one more death slice should do it. Yes, and there it is on the mark. Nicely played there by the best jungler in the world, Supposedly. Epsilon's adapting.
big meatball though does come out. The blinking Raph is going aggressive as well with Adapting's help. Repicast forced away. The Jingle Banger will find its mark, and now Epsilon have just turned up the heat after that engagement, taking out the front the front free line members of Titan. Now they're going to swing potentially here for the Fire Giant straight away. It looks like it. And this is why I'm just so skeptical of that Sylvanas. He this goes in, bait. he initiates, he gets the Wrath of Terra, and melts. Big bait into the fog, and Prime's not going to fall for the fog tricks there. He just <laughs> threw the toy down like, no, not this time round. If they want to do it, they need to do it now. There we go. We're going to try and start this one up immediately. Circle of Protection is not available for Yamin this time round, though. But they should have the ability to tank this one down. They should be healthy enough. No contest on the side of Titan. Teleport 3 isn't done for Ataraxia either, so he can't pour it into a ward and try to disrupt this. This is going to be a free Fire Giant. 320 minutes at that. For Epsilon, I think it is. Okay, there we go. Yeah, they got quite low, but are able to secure it. They'll fall back to the base. Let's take a look at Golden Hand as Epsilon heads back and leading all players there was the Thanatos. In fact, a thousand each for each member. Net worth-wise, yes, it is indeed. Epsilon's adapting. The top net worth on his Thanatos. 20 minutes in, mail of renewal complete. And, uh, well, if you weren't familiar with Thanatos' passive, uh, it, it does something quite similar to the mail of renewal. You get damage, cooldown reduction, Bunch of HP back as well for successfully executing. Um, and now you'll get the extra 20% HP and mana pool out of the Mail of Renewal when it procs on the kill. So so this call from Titan here is trying to get a tier 1 turn on the right-hand side. They've used the fact they expected Epsilon to go back to base. Will they keep pushing is the question for me. Because if they... No, they won't. They, they, they should see some Kong sure? here. Because look at... Yeah, mid. They'll give up a lot. I mean, they'll give up a tier 2 on the left and probably a Phoenix in the mid. This is a base mid. race. But it's... It, they have the beat on Epsilon for now. I don't think Epsilon is, is just now realizing. I don't, it's not going to be a base race, is it? I don't know. No, no, falling okay, back is time. Right. They get a tier two, can they get, they're going to lose a Phoenix for it. For free. Probably. I don't, that call was not correct. That's why I was like, this must there's be a no, base race. Now remember, there's no Emilito here. No Emilito here, but all the members still there. They're trying to bring down Raffer's the Phoenix. trying to Raffer do it. should get it. He will, and he'll get out as well. Takes a big hit from the Vulcan ultimate, but gets rooted, pulled back in. Raffer of Terror deleted is Raffer, but he'll take that trade. Yeah, they'll, they'll trade a tier one and a tier two. And a Sun Wukong in exchange for a Phoenix will Epsilon. And now they've successfully broken the base of Titan. Titan, probably the best trade they can make in that situation. It gives them some nice income. I should, I say it was a good trade for Epsilon, but at the same time, where was Emilito and Adapting? Why did well, they were trying to push up the left side lane. Well, they could have taken tier two still. That fight was still going, they could have gone tier two. Yeah, not sure why the call was to go back. They re they were back in the base having recalled uh, when the Phoenix was assaulted. Yeah, they could have done Golf Fury as well. Like There was two options there they could have yeah, done right. more was, of. It was a bit strange. Where were the parents? Where were the parents? Raph will be speaking to him after the game about that one. Titan sure. finds themselves another tower. More income for the squad now. Take a look at the graph here. And yeah, it's uh, they've recouped some ground. Recouped just because of the you know the towers going down more than anything else. The golf here still stands, so I don't know if they'll want to contest that one against four members with the fire giant. It's a potential opportunity to look for it, though. I suppose I think that's what they're trying to sell for here. Maybe even a pick. Great wall. That's Can they get adapting, adapting in time? Adapting. No. Oh, they'll make it up. Though. Turn around on the Ataraxia. Coming down is Thanatos, and that's an easy kill. And once again, big HP pools don't mean much when you have percentage executes that are maxed out on the side of Epsilon and adapting, making them pay for the Sylvanas pick with a Thanatos. It's a great counter pick. I think, I think that's all this, that, that's going on here. Adapting's basically. still going and going to find the Cypher to Repi, force out the beads as well, and push him back. And one key there is what we saw was Sylvanas, Wrath of Terror. He doesn't knock up an Isis if she's Wingustin. I you know, I think that maybe that it's like, okay, well, if they get a Thor or really any kind of jungler, they're not going to be able to kill the Sylvanas. So that's what we'll pick it. It'll just sit in the lane and farm forever. Probably with oh, the wait. large glaring exception of Thanatos. Well, 22 minutes in, tier 2 tower on the left, gonna fall down as well here. And Titan, well, they're gonna lick their wounds at the base. They've got five minutes starting to pour down the mid lane as well. The Phoenix defense is very important for them here. They've not got Ataraxia though for another 13 seconds, so it's gonna be a little bit of a while. Luckily for them though, there's not too many ultimates. Wrath of Terror isn't up anyway, um, so Sylvanas coming back. Maybe nets him a single kill. Kanye's dead. Kanye life, yeah, he'll die to wing gust there. And now things are looking quite bad. Thanatos is back up into the air. The cooldown reduction factoring in. He'll go back and use it on the minions. He'll take the far side Phoenix as well from the Fire Giant. And it's a 4v5. Epsilon all sitting at full HP. The Fire Giant buff lasting about another 30 seconds. This, this, this game for me was well. a clinic of really good team fights between the two. Both teams have had great fights overall. Good escapes, good engages, and good counter engages too. So it's just been a mixture of that. The one thing that I've seen though is Epsilon, as the game's got on, when they've taken one of these fights, they've got more out of it every single time. And that's why they've got the lead now, and the Fire Giant based off that. Like, every single time they've had an opportunity, they've bit taken the chance to take more things. Ten more seconds of Fire Giant buff here. They'll use the new all minions to move in and try to take down this tower. While they still have that bonus power, they will get it indeed just at the nick of time. And then the Fire Giant buff falls off, and away goes Epsilon. Heading back to the base, spending off their gold, clearing out the jungle of Titan. Yeah, Fire Giant will be up relatively soon as well. So probably the right opportunity for them to go to that right about now. 
What's Golden Hand right now? We should be able to see 2,500 Ooh. on adapting. That's so, farming like check crazy. with his build right now. He's probably going to get some more penetration there. Could even potentially look for some crit if he chose to. Yeah, there's a little bit crit. There's yep. A little bit crit. Crit just... So you don't hit very often with Thanatos, but when you do, you know, popping a player can give you um, all of that bonus HP, right? You get tons of HP regen by killing, especially with that mail over Newell, so... And the set of death is really will allow him to continue a chase to find some in hand. It's similar well. to uh, why you see a Loki build crit. Like, you're only going to in hand once or twice, but, but hey, if it those, crits. Yeah, but you can fill those hits too. I mean, yeah. that's why both Loki and Thanatos um, have use with Hydras. One of the items sure. we don't see very often, but they're some of the only two that you can really see on quite often. Maybe an Alquang as well, to an extent, but. Yeah, it's physical power. Physical. I was going to say different item, but, physical, <laughs> but it would be useful. I think you use a Polyanomicon, I guess, if you really wanted to. Uh, similar, yeah. All right, Epsilon. They'll take the Fire Giant again here. I don't see Titan being able to contest this. Raffer seems to have the beat on them. They have great vision This is what control. Raffer's done all game for me. Raffer is the MVP for this game for what he's done in zoning the team. He's been a sacrificial lamb for the most part. He took the Phoenix. He's zoned him away from Golfier earlier on. He's tanked towers, and then he zones he's again. He's been, been supporting. Doing exactly what he needs to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. I mean, he, he definitely has. I don't like giving him credit either because he's from Liverpool. And, and I hate ginger. people from Liverpool. And he's ginger. He's just like double negative. So he's got no soul, Like, and I'm giving him credit. I hate it. <laughs> Emolito channeling up that World Weaver. Ready to loose it on the Neath here. Maybe we'll even see some, uh, some Neath twerking. So he cancels that World Weaver over and over again. Nothing yet. Well, second Phoenix Maybe. We'll see. We'll see if he does it for the fans. That was a weakened Phoenix. We're going to have to see a defense out of Titan at this one, though. Oh, this is the last full power Phoenix. Titan only chance got under 10k. Only chance they've got to try and defend here. And at the moment, you can just see Emolito's never scared of going forward as a hunter and just like. Also, it was a 29 minute victory. Uh, the fastest at 29 minutes 30 seconds is their average. Okay. Well, we're right on pace. Longest game, 36 minutes. <laughs> well, we're right on we're right on pace for a about a 28-minute finish here, it looks I, like. I told you, put your dinner on it, be ready. Here we go. All right, Ataraxi moves forward. He doesn't find anything with the ultimate. He evaporates as well. No tanking items on the side of that Sun Wukong. Backside adapting goes. That's GG, ladies and gentlemen. Triple? Adapting, showing off now. Quadra? That's a triple. Quadra? No, he's diving. No, he dive it. Dive it, boys. Can't dive for the Penta. No, he can. The boy should support him. They should, you think? They think it's oh, they don't got him. Scumbag Epsilon. Like, what they should 26, 20. What they should be your final there? timer they on this one. All dived. If you're voting on odds and evens for game timer ending, it's a double or nothing now as it ended on a zero. 16, so that's just 20. Lower the average game time of Epsilon so far this season. And the average loss time of Titan. Of Titan has also gone down. Average, lo average game win, 25 minutes for them. Average loss time for them, 29.75. Yep. Now just a little bit lower. Just a little bit lower, a little bit more of an impact. For me, that whole game was backwards and forwards for the most part, but the key was what Epsilon took after they won a team fight. That's for, where the for game me was the, won. It was, why did you pick Sylvanas for the solo lane? I don't know. First blood, though, on your screen. It this is a beautiful a skill. Yeah, it's C, knock up, pop. Nicely done. Really and that's how you delete done. a Sun Wukong, ladies and gentlemen. We yeah. need to know that for future reference. Keep him CC'd. Knock up's quite so good he can't use his own. Yeah, why the why the, the only issue with that is like if you're wasting all that on a Sun Wukong, then you've still got the rest of the team to deal with. Yeah, I've been at five though, it's fine. That's true. But why Sylvanas? I hope Titan wins game number two so we can ask him. Player of this game. Shouldn't surprise anybody here. Adapting. He played Thanatos, it's adapting. Yep, once again, gonna get himself another player of the game. And here he is on your screen picking up the quadra at the end we saw there, but all the way through, honestly, he got himself out of trouble a couple of times with his ultimate, but then re-engaged with it a lot of the times too. Well he just Eight like Sylvanas up. <laughs> yeah. Just eight Sylvanas up. I mean, Sylvanas has that big old HP pool. They whittle him down little by little. He doesn't build any tanking items. You know, even like a Bulwark of Hope there just to prevent the burst so he can't mm -hmm. get eaten up by the Phantom so quickly maybe would have been a better choice for Ataraxia, but that was just a really good blink on that play. Now I just want to see the Sylvanas win. But imagine if he just wins constantly after this. Oh, that's what I'm saying. Like, I really want to see him, like, dominate so I can have a better understanding of, like, what it's intended now, to do. Outside. I mean, it's supposed to be a frontliner that heals, right? That's the idea. But, like, why over the hell who's been banned out on almost every game? But I guess I'm I'm I'm, I'm harping on over uh, over adapting's highlight reel here as he He's gets so his uh, third and fourth kill in this spree to end the game. One of the b the best Euro best jungler in the world, people are saying. Definitely the best European jungler. I'll say it for sure. You reckon he's best world? Well, with Anister never winning games anymore, yeah. Oh, shots fired. I mean, they, I mean, he hasn't been able to play in weeks now. So. Feels bad, man. Yeah, it sucks, but feels bad. I mean, how are you going to say that he's still at the same form that adapting is at? I think he would be the other choice. We'll find out regionals potentially. The right. super regionals. The super, super duper regionals. How exciting. Top performers should be on the bottom of your screen now. And I won't be surprised if it's mainly the Epsilon boys. Actually, I don't see... It is anymore. all the Epsilon boys. Yep. Well, Can they are. For them. The best, thing about, best thing about game two now. One of these is going to have a record broken here. 
Titan has run, split three games in a row. Okay. So if they lose this, they've got rid of their the streak is dead. Their streak of splitting. And if Epsilon win this, then they keep their streak alive. If they lose that game, then Titan's streak stays alive and Epsilon's falls. Someone's losing a streak. Titan probably hopes it's their streak uh, that ends. Or no, doesn't no, end. Doesn't they, end. <laughs> Titan wants their streak to stay doesn't. together. Another one-on-one game. Another one-on-one set is uh, 